In the 2017 to 2018 NBA season, the NBA would shake things up during All-Star Weekend. You see, typically, the All-Star Game took place between the best players of the Eastern Conference facing off against the best players in the Western Conference. And this year, in 2018, they decided to change things up. Instead of having an Eastern Conference team versus a Western Conference team, they're going to have two team captains who are the best players of each conference compile a team by drafting players in a very backyard format, literally by drafting them a few days before All-Star Weekend. And when the NBA decided to make this change, little did they know that they would completely shift the way that All-Star Weekend would be used. Before, it was just seen as a regular break amongst the NBA's best. Now, it changed into a convention and a networking opportunity for the team captains and potentially the all-stars that were playing for him. And nobody had a reputation of doing this better than LeBron James did. As a matter of fact, if you looked at the team that LeBron James drafted versus Team Steph Curry, LeBron James drafted players that were either rumored to be traded soon or were going to be free agents that offseason. LeBron James drafted DeMarcus Cousins of the New Orleans Pelicans, Anthony Davis of the New Orleans Pelicans, Kevin Durant of the Golden State Warriors, Kyrie Irving, who was just traded to the Boston Celtics earlier that year, to join him in the starting lineup. And on his bench, he had LaMarcus Aldridge of the Spurs, Bradley Beal, who was riddled in trade rumors for the Washington Wizards, Kevin Love, who was his current teammate in Cleveland, Victor Oladipo of the Pacers, Kristaps Porzingis of the New York Knicks, John Wall, and Russell Westbrook as reserves. Now, two of those players would eventually go on to become teammates of LeBron James, although DeMarcus Cousins would never make it onto the court with him. But that really doesn't necessarily mean anything, and I understand why you guys would think that. Okay, so what? It's All-Star Weekend. Those players are either in trade rumors or on expiring contracts. It may be just a coincidence. Well, we have further supporting data a year later. Later, that's going to take us to our lead argument. So what's going on, guys? Your boy Mike here. And before we get to the content, we dropped our very first podcast episode on Laced Up on the YouTube channel, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. It features myself, Mike Corzemba, and Get Like Coop. I'm going to leave a link to it in the end screen and in the description down below. And if you subscribe and turn on our notifications for that channel, you will enter for a chance to win a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? So if you remember what happened after the 2018 NBA All-Star Game, LeBron James would officially finish his final season with the Cleveland Cavaliers before taking his talents to Los Angeles to join the Los Angeles Lakers. And this was kind of unprecedented because the only other times that LeBron James left his teams was to join a better team that was suited for a championship run. In this instance, LeBron James left a team that just made it to the NBA Finals, but wasn't able to even come close to another championship, thanks to J.R. Smith. I'm just kidding. But he went ahead and joined a lesser team on the Los Angeles Lakers. Bear in mind, the Lakers were an absolute dumpster fire at this point. They haven't had a legitimate superstar since Kobe Bryant, and they haven't had a legitimate chance at an NBA championship since the 2011 NBA season, when unfortunately they were bounced in the second round against the Dallas Mavericks. So in this case, LeBron James was just joining a rebuilding team that had Brandon Ingram and had Lonzo Ball and Josh Hart and some other good pieces but that was really about it. So for the most part, everyone thought that he was just joining the Los Angeles Lakers because he wanted to get a jump start on his Hollywood movie career. Little did they know at the time that LeBron James was pulling strings behind the scenes because also we found out in that summer that Anthony Davis went ahead and signed with LeBron James's same agency who happens to also be his best friend, which is Clutch Sports. And the rumors began. LeBron James wouldn't just join the Lakers if he didn't have a chance to win a championship, right? There's no way that LeBron James thought that he even had a chance to contend with Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball and Josh Hart on his side. He needed a little bit more than that. And well, 
As things were ramping up during LeBron James's freshman season with the Los Angeles Lakers, things were beginning to become more clear about LeBron's incentives and his motives. As a matter of fact, when the 2019 NBA All-Star Draft came around, Giannis even had this to say about LeBron James's first pick. Uh, with my first pick in the second round, I'm going with Anthony Davis. You sure you want him to be your teammate? Uh, I, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm very sure of that. <laughs> right. is, is, is it that tempering? No, no. <laughs> Shots fired, Tem uh, and you're up. Tempering rules, tempering rules does not apply on All-Star Weekend. <laughs> LeBron's next pick was Kyrie Irving, a person that he was once teammates with, who was rumored to have left the Cleveland Cavaliers not because of an issue that he had with LeBron James, but because he found out that LeBron James was bound to leave the Cleveland Cavaliers, so that was his second pick. And then LeBron James' third pick was a man that forced himself out of San Antonio and got traded to Toronto, but made it clear that he wanted to return home to Los Angeles. And this is when the NBA All-Star Draft officially became known as a networking opportunity for LeBron James. A few weeks later, LeBron James expressed his frustration when he found out that the Los Angeles Lakers didn't trade for Anthony Davis, literally tweeting, man, where's Woj, Shams, Haynes, and McMenamin at? Which was clear that he was frustrated that he didn't get the trade that he was angling for. And to be honest, I don't really blame him because when the trade deadline passed and the New Orleans Pelicans turned down the Los Angeles Lakers trade offer for Anthony Davis, there began a meltdown on both the Los Angeles Lakers end and on the New Orleans Pelicans end. Starting with the New Orleans Pelicans, they fired their general manager right on the spot. Dell Demps was let go for the fact that he did not accept the Lakers trade offer for Anthony Davis. Now on the Los Angeles Lakers side of things, Magic Johnson was under so much scrutiny for finally getting the Lakers new face of the franchise since Kobe Bryant and completely whiffing on an opportunity to pair him with another star to potentially help him make a championship run. He was being roasted for wasting a year of LeBron James and as a result, he ended up stepping down. Now, we know what would end up happening. That offseason, Anthony Davis would get traded to the Los Angeles Lakers. Kawhi Leonard would go home to LA, but it would be to the Los Angeles Clippers. LeBron James would win a NBA championship, or as LeBron James haters like to say, a Mickey Mouse ring in the NBA bubble. But meanwhile, the opposing captain in the 2018 NBA All-Star Draft didn't necessarily have the easiest years since then. You see, in 2018, the Golden State Warriors would win a NBA championship. But finally in 2019, after five straight years of making it to the NBA Finals, all of those games began to take a toll on the Golden State Warriors. Klay Thompson suffered a torn ACL in the 2019 Finals matchup versus the Toronto Raptors. Kevin Durant tore his Achilles in that game as well. That summer, Kevin Durant would leave the Golden State Warriors in a sign and trade for D'Angelo Russell of the Brooklyn Nets. And the following year, Steph Curry would miss a majority of the season with a broken hand. The Golden State Warriors, I have to hand it to them, were extremely savvy in trying to continue to build a good team around Steph Curry. They traded D'Angelo Russell for Andrew Wiggins and a very valuable Minnesota Timberwolves draft pick this year. They drafted James Wiseman with the number two overall pick, which is an ideal big man fit next to Steph Curry and Klay Thompson once Klay Thompson was to return from a torn ACL. But unfortunately, the day before James Wiseman was drafted, Klay Thompson would tear his Achilles tendon. And once again, the Golden State Warriors find themselves in the bottom of the Western Conference totem pole. Now, they could still theoretically make it to the play-in tournament this year, because at the time I'm making this video, they're 10th place, but they're like a game or two games behind 7th place. But to say that the Golden State Warriors aren't necessarily contenders right now wouldn't be the biggest long shot. Now here's where things get intriguing. LeBron James was once again a team captain for the 2021 NBA All-Star Game. 
And this time with his first pick, he selected Steph Curry. And at the time when we were doing our all-star game live draft stream, I even made a joke that, hey, LeBron James might be trying to recruit Steph Curry. But if you even look at Steph Curry's contract, his contract set to expire in the 2022 NBA season, which means the year after next year. And while LeBron James barely shared the floor with Steph Curry during All-Star Weekend, he had one nice moment where he found Steph Curry on the logo for a three. He even took to Twitter to say this, finally got to share the floor with Steph Curry. Well overdue and I loved every single second. He called him the greatest shooter of all time and gave Curry credit for changing the NBA. Curry responded by saying, I do claim Akron as my birthplace. It's pretty dope that he is the kid from Akron, but to know two guys from Ohio are at the highest level right now. Now, Brian Windhorst said this on his podcast. I thought it was hilarious that over All-Star Weekend, LeBron James was praising Steph Curry up and down. LeBron obviously has begun the recruiting of Steph in the event that he wouldn't extend and that somehow he would become a free agent. Steph Curry is eligible for a contract extension this summer, and LeBron James started recruiting him at All-Star break. So let me make something very clear. Yes, I do believe LeBron James has begun to recruit Steph Curry, just as he tried to recruit Kawhi Leonard, just as he probably tried to recruit Kyrie Irving back to the Lakers, and he was unsuccessful. There's multiple things that you have to pay attention to in this report. One, a union of Steph Curry and LeBron James would wouldn't be half as exciting as you guys are imagining in your heads. This is when Steph Curry would be 35 and LeBron James would be 38. I don't necessarily think that's going to terrorize opposing NBA teams. But let's say they're both able to defeat Father Time. There's something else that's working against LeBron James's favor. One, I don't think Steph Curry is necessarily championship hungry. He's won three NBA championships. He's na He's been named a two-time NBA MVP. And if he truly cares for his legacy, I think staying with the Golden State Warriors through the entirety of his career would be seen as something a little bit more admirable than another championship or two. The third thing is the Golden State Warriors could offer Steph Curry the most money and despite Steph Curry being 34 next year, I expect them to once again give him a Supermax contract just to thank him for all of his achievements. And at the same time, Steph Curry does feel somewhat indebted to the Golden State Warriors for not giving up on him when he had ankle issues early on in his career. So he would get the most money from the Golden State Warriors. Whereas if he was to join the Los Angeles Lakers, I'd assume they have Anthony Davis at that time. LeBron James is getting paid an obscene amount of money at that time. He'd probably have to take a pay cut to join that team. So to summarize everything, do I think LeBron James actually tried to recruit Steph Curry? Of course he did. I really don't expect anything less. That's what he's supposed to do. Do I think Steph Curry is going to join the Lakers in the future? Most definitely not mainly because the Lakers wouldn't be able to offer him much money. He's probably not at the stage of his career where he would ring chase. He's considered to be a Golden State Warriors legend, and he's one of the few stars that could claim that he stayed on one team throughout the entirety of his NBA career. He would be getting paid more in Golden State, and there isn't enough of a reason for me to see Steph Curry joining LeBron James on the Lakers, although I think it's an adorable theory and a nice little pipe dream. And even if he did, do you even think a 38-year-old LeBron James, a 35-year-old Steph Curry, and a 30-year-old Anthony Davis would be able to contend for a NBA championship? Let me know in the comment section down below. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.